You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron. Now here's your host, Ethan Haristadulu. What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Greek's Gridiron. I'm Ethan Haristadulu. And today, with some more free agency discussion, I'm taking a look at the Arizona Cardinals and the roughly $39 million in cap space they're currently sitting on to talk to you all about some re-signings I would either expect and or like to see from them. And then also the same as far as positional targets going into the actual part of free agency. So I encourage you Cardinals fans to comment down below Hello, I want to hear your thoughts and opinions and join in on the discussion. But we'll start with re-signings first. We'll talk about positional targets later on. Beginning with the re-signings, I have three players I'm going to highlight here. It's not every single move I think they're going to make, just three guys I decided to pick out from the bunch here. And the first one we're going to start with here, and I think is one that's probably going to get the most conversation over the next few weeks, is going to be wide receiver Marquise Brown, who will be 27 during the duration of next season. Spotrack is estimating his AAV to be somewhere in the ballpark of close to 15 million dollars per year on whatever deal it is he signs for next season in 2023 he averaged 11.3 yards per reception 51 catches 574 yards and four touchdowns now as for my thoughts on this price here for him at 15 million per year I don't quite know if that's going to be the number that the Cardinals and well that Marquise Brown and the Cardinals wind up landing at I do think there is a slight possibility you could maybe get him for a little bit less because part of the reason why Marquise Brown was even brought into Arizona was for the opportunity to play with former college teammate Kyler Murray so this re-signing feels more so about keeping Kyler Murray and Marquise Brown happy and together and working in tandem as initially intended when he was first brought over last offseason and kind of a move I wouldn't be surprised to see now again the number at 15 million per year that is kind of a lot however is it one of those deals that is just too far out there to maybe make sense not necessarily especially if the cardinals opt to go wide receiver in the first round of the draft this year as some people are projecting you spend you know a two or three year deal on marquise brown within that 15 million per year range by the time his contract is up if whatever wide receiver one you go after in the draft is excelling and looking good and by the time year three four comes around and they're eligible for their extension if things with marquise brown have not quite worked out or if you know he's aging out maybe has a strong couple of years declining by the third year it puts you in a good spot where a big money contract is due to the rookie you draft this year and you're allowed to let marquise brown walk in the you know in the future so it's one of those things where it's it's like a there, there is kind of like a there there's a way to spin it i would say in both directions like for those of you that are saying i don't want marquise brown for 15 million a year i'm kind of in that same ballpark but i almost wouldn't be shocked to see Arizona maybe pay him that yearly amount just to keep him and Kyler Murray together as a unit because that was the idea initially in the first place however I also wouldn't be surprised to see maybe Marquise Brown with a dip in production this past season maybe elect to take a little bit less to play with Kyler Murray making something along the lines of like anywhere from 11 to 13 million dollars a little bit more digestible for those of you that are maybe on the fence about bringing him back for 15 million per year I think if the numbers are right it makes a lot of sense especially when you think long term and especially if you're expecting Arizona to draft like a legit number one with that pick number four or somewhere within the first round if they opt to trade back or something along those lines second person I'm looking at here and I want to discuss with you all is going to be linebacker Chris Barnes. He'll be 26 years old during the bulk majority of next season. And the AAV estimate that I was able to come up with roughly just kind of based off of other contracts and things, I think you could see him signing somewhere along the ballpark of like four to $7 million per year, give or take in that direction. I don't think he's warranting a massive contract extension north of like double digits by any means, as far as like 10 million plus something like that. But in 16 games, he racked up 55 tackles. He had three tackles for for loss and interception this is someone that i think is a quality guy that you want to keep on the roster who stood up and did a really good job last season especially when you consider when kaiser white went down injury to him he stepped up did a solid job there this is one of those keeping your quality guys and i think that the the cardinals kind of suffer from a conundrum right now where they have some really good quality guys but they don't they don't have the like elite guys so i look at barnes as a guy that you want to keep around to have really strong depth on your roster and in the linebacking room here so 
if you're signing him to anywhere within like four to maybe seven million per year, something along those lines, I think that's a really solid number for a guy that you aren't expecting to necessarily be the number one linebacker within your linebacking room. You get him on a two or three year deal. So the contract isn't something that's going to cost you well down into the future there. It makes a lot of sense to me. And again, quality guys like that, not necessarily the easiest to come around and find, go and keep them. Don't let them walk. And then the final guy that I have that I'm discussing here, again, another good quality guy that I think is worth keeping on the roster in a defense that was just not necessarily great this past season. One of the brighter spots in the 11 games that he played here, and I'm talking about defensive tackle Leki Fatu. He's going to be 26 years old during next season. I have his average annual listed somewhere along the lines of another like five to $7 million per year, give or take within that range. In 2023, in the 11 games he played, he had 28 tackles, five for a loss. He had two and a half sacks, three pressures. By no means are these numbers explosive. They don't jump off the screen or anything like that. But when you consider that, again, a guy that's been generally healthy for the majority of his career up until this past season, he did play in 34 games the two seasons prior. So in every single game possible, I do think that he's someone that is worth keeping around, especially when you, you know, you sit back and you realize the numbers he produced were again in about 11 games. He missed roughly a third of the season. You missed what six games altogether so yeah basically a third of the season i do think it's worth keeping him around to continue to grow within your system here and see what he can do down the road if he's not a starting like starting caliber guy he is a guy that you can have within a rotation that can come in and be effective against maybe guys that are rotating in and out amongst the opponent's offensive line when you're in the heat of the game within those you know later later stages things like that another two three-year deal type of guy a quality re-signing these three And Marquise Brown, I guess, aside, when you talk like Fatu and when you talk Barnes, maybe not necessarily guys that are going to jump off the screen discussing about them, but they're guys that I think are important to making a full and complete roster and definitely worth keeping around here. Not every re-signing has to be some splashy big thing where you're keeping every absolute best guy possible, especially when the Cardinals coming out of the season you just had here, you want to keep whatever good came out of a lot of the bad this year. Now, Moving out from re-signings and now taking a look at positional targets, things that I think are very much in consideration or just things that I would really like to see the Arizona Cardinals target going into free agency this year. I got three different positions highlighted here. And the first one that I'm going to target is going to be defensive tackle. This one was probably the one that I felt the strongest about. And I and I was the most sure of like who I would like to see Arizona go after and or expect should the guys be available. I have three guys in mind. And it's if they're available because they're all key players to the defenses they're, they'd be coming from, but they are three guys that if they are available, you throw every single dollar and then some at them. And I'm talking Justin Matabuke from Baltimore. I'm talking Chris Jones from Kansas City, and I'm talking Christian Wilkins from Miami. Now, these are guys, and more so Chris Jones, I would say, than the other two. You're probably going to have to throw every single dollar and then some to come and get especially chris jones i feel like he is very high on the winning that they've been doing over there in kansas city so to get him to come into arizona you're gonna have to get him to buy into what you're doing over there and really make him believe that you can be a contender and i know there are some people out there who think with the right additions arizona is a bit of a sleeper now with a healthy kyler murray going into next season definitely a possibility so there is a selling point there and then as for matabike and wilkins these are guys that potentially their teams just will not have the cap room to be able to you know, maneuver and dollars around whatever it is teams seem to be doing these days like magic. Maybe these are guys that wind up hitting free agency. They are top dollar guys, best of their position type of guys, guys that I think are worth going after that will fortify the interior of your defensive line and greatly complement the rotational depth pieces, guys like Fatu that I was just talking about in the re-signings here. If for whatever reason, those guys don't wind up being available or you just don't land them. There are some other people that I'm looking at. You have like Michael Hoyt from the Rams, Quentin Jefferson from the Jets. You also have Sheldon Rankins from Houston. Those are all quality guys that are able to bring pressure, get to the quarterback, plug up the middle, things like that. So there is like options beyond those big three that I mentioned here. But I look at Arizona as like a team that if those three guys are available in any combination, you are a team that needs to be targeting those guys to help add some oomph to that defensive line. 
Second position I'm looking at here, we're going to stick with the D-line here because I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done once again addressing it. But this time around, I'm looking at edge. And the reason I say this is because this is a very, very good year to be in the market for edge rushers. Not only are there a ton of guys set to hit free agency, and some of those guys obviously might not end up being available, but there are some players that are in situations right now that I do think could wind up being cap casualties that wind up hitting the free agent market that aren't set to be free agents this year so this is going to be one of the best edge draft or excuse me not draft classes one of the best edge free agent markets to probably be diving into with a serious need at the spot when you look at some of the big name guys here obviously josh allen comes to mind zadarius smith you have daniel hunter those are kind of like the prize guys the big ones that a lot of people have their eyes on should they become available but then you also have other guys ones that i think for whatever reason are just getting forgotten about or maybe aren't quite having the years that people would expect uh, i look at a guy like dorrance armstrong from dallas eight sacks this past season really effective guy off the edge here one of the more forgotten guys because i know you you know you look at like demarcus lawrence you look at um micah parsons and those are the two guys you really think of as far as pass rushing is concerned over there in Dallas, but Dorrance Armstrong, eight sacks last season. DJ Wonham, he's another guy from Minnesota. A little bit, a little, not a lot of noise, I would say, surrounding him. Another guy, eight sacks this past season. A lot of people look at Chase Young and think, oh man, this guy's washed. He's not going to be the same anymore, yada, yada, yada. Especially after going over to San Francisco, I think a lot of people looked at it and thought, this is not nearly the production we thought we were going to get from Young being paired alongside Nick Bosa. Don't get me wrong, but a lot does go into a change, especially in the middle of the year. Like I know some people, every now and again, you get a mid-season trade at the deadline that is just a home run hit and it works out however there are also situations where players come in and it just takes them a while to grasp everything that's going on over there and it's not like san francisco is known for some vanilla defense i know they're going through a big defensive coordinator change right now but it's not like chase young isn't a talented player it's just injuries kind of slowed him down but he still managed seven and a half sacks this past season he had five already when he was in washington before getting traded and you know granted two and a half during the rest of the regular season with san francisco probably not what some people expected probably expecting to see him cross like the double digit mark that's fair i get that but at the same time you always have to consider mid-season moves can sometimes make or break the season that a player was having and chase young was having at least a respectable season prior to being traded on top of that I do think that this is something that you could potentially see the Cardinals address in the draft here. So, like I said, yes, there's the home run guys, the Daniel Hunters, the Josh Allens of the world. There's also the guys, maybe a little bit of a step down, but still effective guys that you could pair alongside a top end draft selection if maybe the Cardinals don't opt to go for a wide receiver and they go edge during the draft. Just some things to think about there. And then finally, the third position I have highlighted, last one we'll discuss here. I'm looking at the wide receiver room. This is one that, you know, in today's NFL, you cannot have enough capable wide receivers. I think everyone these, these days wants to have at least three or four really good guys that they can rely on as far as wide receiver rooms are concerned. Uh, this really kind of comes down to just what the Cardinals have in, like, their plans for the wide receiver room going into next season here. Greg Dortch is somebody that could potentially hit the free agent market here, and I feel like depending on who you talk to, some people really want him back. Other people wouldn't be... You know, it wouldn't be opposed to seeing him be allowed to walk at free agency. You also have like the 2023 third round selection of Michael Wilson. Whether you think that he's somebody who could flourish into a legitimate guy or not is really up to who you talk to at this point one year in. Uh, you know, seems like a solid option. Not quite sure he could evolve into like a legitimate number one or anything by any means. But I do like the idea of going into free agency with the option to either A, swing for the fences and go get one of the top tier guys like a T Higgins or B, go into free agency looking for another really strong solid option especially like if you let greg dorch walk and you know maybe cardinals brass isn't necessarily as high on michael wilson as they might might have thought they would be selecting him last year in the third round and we talk about grabbing like a quality wide receiver to add to the room to just add talent add that competition and make it a little bit better i look at guys like kj osborne from minnesota you have noah brown coming out from houston donovan people people's jones is one of those guys that going into detroit you probably expected to see a lot more from him but in a really crowded offense that just has so many talented players i feel like he might have gotten a little bit lost in the shuffle but this guy's averaging 15.5 yards per reception over his career and this past season was his lowest and the first time he's ever been subbed 12 yards per reception like big play guy he hit 800 yards a couple of seasons ago like a lot of talent there these three guys that i just mentioned here all quality guys that are going to cost you like 
seven, eight million per year or less. You're not going to spend a ton of money on them. And in today's day and age where wide receivers are pushing nearly $20 million per year or more, depending on how good they are, that's not a bad bargain to be going with, especially with guys that are talented. It doesn't necessarily have to be a T. Higgins signing because if you go into the draft at number four, you have a legitimate opportunity to go and draft Marvin Harrison Jr. himself if somebody doesn't jump you or if the Cardinals want to try to reach up higher just to ensure that they can get him. The option is there. And even if they go trade back and they think it's, you know, it, let's hypothetically say they stay put at four, someone at three gets Marvin Harrison, uh, uh, Marvison, ha Marvin Harrison Jr. If they trade out with the Patriots or the Patriots opt to select him, like whatever the whole situation may be, you know, you get picked within those first three selections you can move back and there's still some very quality quality starting worthy guys that you could get at number four or maybe you trade back a couple of spots with somebody that wants to jump up for a different position that they're looking you know looking to move up there's a lot of opportunity there you don't have to go and get the number one wide receiver in free agency here it's not all about spending every last dollar I do think that there is some significant money that needs to be spent, hence why I really highlighted defensive tackle and edge. But wide receiver is one of those that you can get away with getting a good, talented guy that's going to be like sub $10 million per year. Still be effective on your roster, push the competitive nature in there, be a talent that could threaten some other guy's jobs and force them to maybe step up. That's kind of what I'm looking at here. You pair him, you know, one of these signings along with keeping Marquise Brown, whether Greg Dortch is allowed to stay or not, you know, however that ends up working itself out, and you go and draft the guy in the first round, something along those lines, maybe a second round guy if they think they can get a good solid option that falls into the second round. I think there's a lot of possibilities at wide receiver. So I wouldn't be opposed to seeing them go a little bit lighter as far as free agent wide receiver just look for legitimate talent and depth to the room that can help push everyone else around them that's kind of what i'm looking at but those are my thoughts my opinions as always cardinals fans and anyone else watching i always invite you comment down below let me hear your thoughts and opinions but that is it for me if you made it to the end i greatly appreciate it i'll see you all next time have a good one